Hey there, it's Mario here. And in this video, I'm gonna answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I get all the time, and that is, should I weigh myself every day? So should you weigh yourself every single day? I'm gonna give you the pros and cons, and what are some of the things that I've experienced with my clients, and what does the research say on the topic, as well as, there's a lot of uh, people in the fitness industry that are completely against weighing yourself. This is a topic that is often frowned upon, especially on the female side of things, where girls hate the scale, you know, they really have a, Poor relationship with the scale and avoiding the scale is really just avoiding the, the symptom, you know, masking the symptom while you're not addressing the root cause of the problem, which is your relationship with the tool that is supposed to help you. And that's one thing that I wanted to clear up here. I mean, I have nothing against the learning more about the psychological effects, but think about how many times you're just avoiding the problem instead of addressing the problem directly. And what are you gonna do? I mean, are you gonna run away from every weight scale that you see in your, for the rest of your life? I mean, it's much more efficient if you just solve the issue and just fix your relationship with the tool. And now, if you look at the research, a great study, 2014, they basically looked at sticking to a diet and how that correlates with daily weigh-ins and with how frequently people weighed in. And if they noticed that there were more gaps between the weigh-ins, that meant that people were a little bit off their diet. So the more the gaps were between the weigh-ins, so the longer they took to weigh in again, the less likely these people were to stick to their diet. So once you don't measure your diet, if you don't measure what's going on in your diet, uh, you're less likely to care about the diet. You're less likely to commit to eating healthy food, to commit to nutrition. I can tell you from my own experience, this is absolutely the case. When I don't weigh myself in the morning, that day or that week when I skip weighing, I'm just less mindful. I'm just less aware of my choices. It's just that that daily metric is a reminder for me that I have a goal that day with the nutrition. I have something that I meant to accomplish that day, which is hitting my calories, which is hitting my macros. And by me avoiding that part, by me avoiding to weigh myself for some reason, or if I'm traveling, I don't have the scale, I really can see the difference in my daily decision making. And anything that we can use to make sure that our decisions are made better, we should definitely take advantage of that because fat loss diet itself is actually quite difficult. I mean, you probably notice and staying that calorie deficit is not easy. As well as we lose patience, we're more likely to make mistakes along the way if we don't have the right data. So the right mindset, and should you weigh yourself? I mean, my answer is yes, absolutely. You should weigh yourself every day. And the reason why I'm saying that is that it will raise that awareness. And the more data you can get, and if you get into that scientific mindset, it is gonna give you another tool that you can use to measure your progress. And this is fantastic. I mean, I'm not saying it's perfect. The weight scale is absolutely not perfect. And I can sympathize a lot with the, uh, let's say, female side of things when girls are really step in a scale, sometimes like six to 10 pounds difference, especially if uh, they're in a period and they just, these cycles can have a huge impact on the scale. So the scale metrics, for girls at least, you should measure, let's say, that week and compare that week to the week that you had the previous month, so 30 days in between, and then you can see if there's some kind of correlation and if you're moving forward, at least in the weight department, right? So in terms of guys, we have less fluctuations, so that's better, but there are still fluctuations. There are still water weight uh, changes depending on your stress levels. There are still a lot of changes depending on your general training as well as which types of foods you eat. Certain foods will stimulate more water retention. And what that really means in the end is that you wanna to, want to be comfortable with that single metric and realize that that single day that you see that number in that single day or two days or three days even, that doesn't mean much, right? So you wanna kinda of zoom out and gather a lot of data, right? If you gather two weeks of daily wanes, that will actually give you a really good idea of what's going on because you can average those out, right? When you average it out, it actually gives you a nice little trend of what's going on with your diet. And that is how you measure your progress. It's not that you look at one single day, even if you did lose a certain amount of weight, maybe you just lost a lot of water weight, right? Maybe you just depleted your glycogen, right? Like one gram of carbohydrate adds about four grams of water with it. So if you just deplete your carbohydrate reserves and if you just go a little carb one day, for example, you might notice that you lost a lot of weight, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you lost a lot of fat. And I think avoiding using the scale is a big mistake if you're looking to really optimize the process of fat loss, if you're looking to really dial down your diet and dial down your nutrition, I think avoiding the scale is really not a 
the smart decision. And of course, I mean, I'm not advocating just using the scale. I think the scale is best used in a combination with the caliper as well as video or photo measurements of your progress. And once you combine all those tools, you're actually more likely to make better decisions on a day-to-day -day basis, especially on a week-to-week -week basis. And another thing, you actually know when to take diet breaks. You know when to do those refeeds. You know when to do those calorie adjustments, when it's time to cut the calories again, when it's time to add more cardio. You know that because you have the metric. And if you ignore the metric, you're kind of uh, blindfolded. And that's not a good position to be in if you're really caring about getting that diet over in an efficient way where you can then go back into lean gaining and focus on muscle gaining, which is probably the phase where you're most likely going to make the best gains, right? Because when you're in a dead caloric deficit, you're really just shedding your body fat. You're not making that much muscle gains unless you're a complete beginner or someone who's coming back from a layover of training, right? So that's just the reality. So focus on that scale, focus on the other tools, as I mentioned. I mean, when you measure yourself, typically you wanna do it in the morning on an empty stomach after toilet, no clothes on, preferably do that track those metrics, use tools, I mean, such as MyFitnessPal to weigh in so you can see those nice, nice little graphs. You can also use uh, tools like Happy Scale. There's a really cool app for Apple users there. And it kind of averages things out and it gives you some nice predictions, which is also cool for motivation. And as many as those um, little motivational things you can do, that's really helpful for the diet. That's all the video. I mean, conclusion, yes, weigh yourself have a healthy relationship, have that scientific mindset where you're just gathering data to make sure that you can make baby decisions. Let me know in the comments below. Do you weigh yourself every day? So hit me up in the comments below. Aside from that, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.